Hello everyone! In this video, I will explain you how to easily perform matrix computations and linear algebra operations in C++ programming language. Some of you watching this might ask me the following question. Why do we need to use C++ to perform matrix operations? When we have MATLAB, we have Python. Well, you don't need to do, right? You have MATLAB, you have Python, and you can perform all the computations. However, if you want to implement your algorithm in an embedded system, then you would most likely use C++ or some other programming language, depending on application. However, C++ is a industry standard for real-time systems or for embedded systems. For example, you have a controller and you would like to implement a model-based controller that uh, needs to invert a lot of matrices to extract data, to, me to form measurements, uh, to extract some information from these measurements, and you would most likely use a C++ algorithm. This video is based on Eigen Matrix library. Eigen Matrix library is a powerful C++ library for performing matrix computations and linear algebra operations. For example, here is the code that I will be explaining in this video. In this code, I define matrices, I perform basic uh, vector matrix operations, I transpose matrices, I assign matrix values, I invert different matrices. For example, these three lines of code define a matrix of zero, a three times three matrix of zero, and we print out the matrix element using the classical C++ approach. As usual, I created a post that summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. A link to this post can be found in the description below. Let us explain how to install the Eigen Matrix library and how to include it in your project. So if you go to the main web page of the Eigen Matrix library, here you can find download links. If you click on a zip download link, here it is. If you open it in your download folder, Eigen should be found over here. Here is the source. folder, right, with all the necessary files. Now, the advantage of the Eigen matrix library is that you just need to include the header files. You don't need to compile the whole installation on your computer. You just need header files. In this project, I will be using Microsoft Visual Studio. So I will explain you how to include Eigen matrix library in your Microsoft Visual Studio project and you can easily generalize this approach to any type of basically uh, system you will be using for your design. To install the Eigen matrix toolbox and to add it to your Microsoft Visual Studio project, copy the source folder, open the zip file, copy the source folder and copy it to a new folder. In my case, I will place it somewhere here. And if you double click here, you can just control V, you can paste your source folder. Now, at the same time, you can open a new Microsoft Visual Studio project. You're going to use Windows console application and we're going to click on OK. So after some time, this is the main window, this is your basically a uh, source file, the main source file, right? We will not be using these lines of codes. 
we are not going to use uh, pre-compiled headers so we can erase this right after you erase this it's very important that you tell to your compiler that you will not be using pre-compiled headers so if you click here right click and you click on properties you need to tell to your C++ compiler that you will not be using pre-compiled headers so under these options you can find uh, the option pre-compiled headers and we will say not using pre-compiled headers and we can click on OK. The next step is to add the Aegean source files to your project path. For that purpose, you're going to do right click on console application and under this section you can basically select the folder. In my case, I've already done that, but I'm going to repeat this. So I'm going to do click on new line, click here, then codes, toolbox, again 2, and this is the folder, and I click on OK, and I click on OK. Fine. Now your source files or header files are added to the path of your project. Our first task is to define a 3x3 three three matrix of zeros. Before we do that, we need to include the necessary header files. So with this code line, we're including the dense header files that are used to perform dense matrix computations. We're using standard two options. We're using the standard namespace and we're using the uh, Agen namespace to simplify the notation. These three code lines are used to define a three by three matrix of zeros. So, this is the Eigen object for matrices. The first parameter is float, denoting the type of the variable, and the last two parameters are matrix dimension. So, three by three, since we have three rows and three columns, the first entry is the number of rows, the second entry is the number of columns, and matrix A is the variable name. And with this code line, we set the entries to zero. And finally, with this code line, with a simple CO out function, we can print the matrix entries. If you find this definition difficult or too verbose, you can use the built-in type definitions. So this type definition, matrix 3F, is equivalent to this one. These two last characters, 3 and F, 3 denotes the matrix dimensions, 3 by 3, we are considering square matrices, and F is the type of the variables stored in the matrix. And this is the matrix name. Again, we can set its entries to 0 and then print down the matrix. So let us build the project. And let's start without debugging. And the output can be can be seen. One second, can be seen over here. So there, these are two approaches: the first approach and the second approach. Some of you might ask how to deal with the case when we do not know a priori the matrix dimensions, or when we want to set the matrix dimensions during the compile time. Well. Eigen has an option for that. So we can define the so-called dynamic variables. Dynamic matrices are basically matrices that whose dimensions are not known at the compile time or they can be manually set during the runtime or compile time. So this is the declaration. Instead of writing the number of rows and columns, we can use the uh, identifier dynamic and basically this command line just declares the variable but does not allocate the memory space for matrices and does not initialize the values the type definition a shorthand notation is over here we can also use constructors so we can also call no constructors to al allocate the memory space so we can say matrix dynamic matrix 
this is a type definition, x denotes unknown size or the size that can be dynamically set and d stands for double. So we are storing doubles in this matrix and these are the matrix dimensions. Now, these code lines are used to manually assign matrix entries. So how to manually assign matrix entries? So here is how to do that. Say that we have a matrix A. One, two, three, four. Now, the question is how to define such a matrix in A. We can define a dynamic matrix A and then we can manually set the entries of this matrix as follows. So here should be 1, sorry, this should be equal to 4. So notice that Agen is starting to count the entries from 0. In contrast, MATLAB is starting to count entries from 0, from 1. So 0, 0 entry is actually entry on the first row and on the first column. The entry 0, 1 is the element on the first row and on the second column, etc. So in our code, here is the matrix. We define, let's say, a matrix C1, 2 by 2. We define its entries and we print the matrix values. So we build a solution and we start without debugging to obtain the results. So let us repeat that. Here it is. Here's what we obtain. One, two, three, four. Here's where we print the matrix. There is another way for filling in the matrix entries. Here it is. In this case, we are going to define a four by four matrix of floats and its entries are going to start from the first entry equal to one to the last entry equal to 16. So our matrix will have the following form. In our case, the matrix will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is how we define, here is the code, this is how we define such a matrix. We define a dynamic matrix and we assign its entries using this operator. And here are the entries. They are separated by commas, so this is basically nothing less than an array. However, Agen transformed this array row-wise into 4x4 four four matrix, and finally we print this matrix using the CO out. We build a project. and we run it and here's our out output so we have 4x4 four four matrix from 1 to 16 usually in computations you often need to define matrix of zeros matrix of ones or matrix of arbitrary constants so let's see how to do that generally speaking there are two approaches so for example here we will define a matrix of zeros 5 by 5 matrix. We set the row number, we set the column number. Here we define a dynamic matrix and with this code line we can define a matrix of zeros with specified row number and column number and we print the matrix. Another option is to use the member function set zero and to specify row number and column number. However, we need to define the object and then to call this function. Similarly, if we want to define the matrix of ones, we will use the same approach, first approach and the second approach using the member function. Finally, if we want to define the matrix of constants, first we define a constant, then we use constant function or the member function set constant 
and we print the matrix. What if you want to define an ident identity matrix? Also, there are two approaches. We define a dynamic matrix. Then we either call this constructor function or we call the member function, empty identity with the specified row number and column, column number. Let us compile this and let us run it. Here's our output. So what do we see here? These are our matrices of zeros, right? Two approaches, matrices of ones, two approaches, and constant matrices, two approaches. And finally, here is our identity matrix using two approaches. Let us see how to access certain matrix blocks. So in Agen, if we want to access, for example, these blocks of the matrix, we will use the member function block. So we will use the member function block. This function has four input arguments. The first input, the first and the second input arguments are basically the starting positions of the block. So in this case, the starting position will be second row and the second column. However, we write one one since we know that Egan is starting to count entries from the zero element. And we specified, here we specify the width and the height of the block. So in this case, the width is two and the height is two. So this is the notation used to select certain blocks. So let's see how this thing works in practice. So we have a matrix that looks like this, right? We define the matrix. And let's say we want to access these blocks. So 101, 102, 105, and 106. So we specify the position of the first entry and the width and the height of the block. Here it is. Another option is basically to use uh, uh, another operator that we'll explain later. So if you execute this code, this is what we get. Okay, so in the first case, we're selecting these blocks fine. In the second case, in this case over here, what we are doing, we're selecting from here, these central blocks, the central block 106, 107, 110, 111. So this is what we get. It works perfectly. Let us now see how to access rows and columns. This is very simple. In this case, we are going to access the, with this command, we are going to access the first row of the matrix. So we're going to select this row. In the second case, we're going to select the first column of the matrix with this function. Okay, then before we execute the code, let us explain how to create a diagonal matrix out of a vector. This is often necessary in computations. First, we're going to define a vector. So we're going to use the matrix specifier, double 3, 1, so the vector dimensions are three rows and one column. And here we fill in the vector. So the vector is one, two, three. Now we define again a dynamic matrix. We call it diagonal matrix. And how do we construct diagonal matrix? We call a member function as diagonal on vector one. This will transform the vector one into diagonal matrix with the entries of the vector one on the main diagonal of the resulting matrix. So let us compile this build, debug, start without debugging. Here it is. Here is our final result. So it's a diagonal matrix. And here is the first row of the V matrix. You can see it over here in the first column. Now, let us see how to perform basic matrix operations. This is the final step, right? When we learn how to use a library, Final step is to learn how to perform basic matrix operations. 
So here we define two matrices. We fill in its entries and we can simply perform matrix computations by just calling this line called A1 plus B1 C1. So the operator plus is overloaded. And we obtain the result. Mar matrix multiplication is simple. Let's say we define a D1 matrix and we can say D1 is A1 times B1 and we print out the D1 matrix. Multiplication by a scalar. Okay, we define a scalar integer variable and we multiply the matrix F S actually the matrix A1 by a scalar. Let's do the matrix transpose. Here you have to be careful. Okay, so you define two matrices. We define matrix, let's say, AT and R1. AT will be the transpose of A1. So how do we do? We have a matrix A1. We call the member function transpose, and we obtain the result. Similarly, let's say if you want to evaluate uh, such expression, so if you take A1 transpose, add B1 on top of that, we want to see the result. Here is the syntax. A1 transpose plus B1. Now, here you should be careful. Your debugger will report errors if you call the transpose on A1 and you assign the entries of A1. This will not transpose the matrix. At the end, A1 will be the same one as the untransposed A1. So, there is an explanation in the uh, library manual. I will not go over this for the sake of brevity. The correct way to do that is to use the member function transpose in place. So we can use the member function transpose in place to directly transpose the matrix A1. Finally, the matrix inverse is also simple. We define the matrix G1 and we call the matrix inverse member function A1 to define G1. And finally, here we can check the result. So let us build this piece of code. And let us let us run it. Here is the result. Okay. Let us look in our original matrix. So here is A1, here is B1. The sum is given over here. Okay, this is the code line. The product, here is the product, is given over here. You can double check that this is correct. This is the scalar product here right this is the transpose demonstration of the transpose over here this is the line here we can uh, evaluate the expressions here is the expression evaluation that you can see over here and finally we demonstrate the inverse so we compute the inverse we plot the g1 matrix and just for check we multiply here here we'll multiply a inverse by a1 we should get an identity matrix. However, you see here that you get a very small number, which is effectively zero. Okay, this would be the introduction of the Aiken matrix library. I hope you enjoyed this video. And basically, yeah, in the future, I will explain how to use the Aiken matrix library to, for example, simulate a dynamical system, to compute a controller gain, to, for example, compute a Kalman filter, to perform optimization, etc. Thank you very much for your attention.